since I'm stuck waiting for this uh, part to come in, I thought I would just even, I can't get the car over to the lift, I'd have to push it because I can't start it up right now. I thought I would go ahead and uh, replace the, uh, the hoses that go to the hidden charcoal canister, which is behind the front fender. And so you've got two hoses that go in there, one of them here, and a second one down here, much smaller. So there's the second one. And it comes off up in the front here. Now, you can see them going through the inner fender here, and they uh, and they attach to the uh, the canister, which is located back in here. So, in order to get the uh, get to the canister, there's a, a plate uh, inside the um, inner fender uh, against the back uh, wall of that that you have to loosen. And uh, before you do that, though, to get it out, you have to loosen these up. And they come out of this clip, and then they go through the firewall here. There's grommets there. And you have to loosen them up because you're going to want to uh, pull this thing down and out. And they actually will go through the, uh, they will go through the, the plate, which is against the, uh, the rear uh, wall of the fender, which seals this, uh, this canister up. So I've loosened them up from the plastic clips here. I'm going to loosen them up there so I can pass them through and remove the plate and then uh, go ahead and replace them. Okay, so the first hose to the canister comes off the plastic part of the plenum. I like to keep these. And so that's loose. It will allow me to pass it through the, uh, the inner well here of the fender. And now I've got to get to the second one, which is this little guy, which is uh, down, uh, lower down, and uh, so we've got to get that out of there and uh, and uh, and loosen that up as well. And you can see it passing right here. Maybe you can see it, but right there. So we follow that down and then loosen that up and uh, and away we go. Trying to get a better view of that small line. Here you can see it here. Okay, it just attached right there. And uh, it then runs underneath and then out through the inner wall. So it's it's fairly easy to get to. You just have to work your hands around there and uh, and get it off of there. There we go. Now it's loose and that will allow me to pull it through here. And both of these are now loose and I can then pull out that uh, inner, uh, inner seal and get to where they attach to the canister and replace both these lines. Okay, so now I'm down under the car Here's the, and I've removed the three, there are three Phillips or cross-headed screws with washers that go through here. And you can see them, one, and then two, and then three. And uh, by the way, this is a messy job here. Um, and uh, once you have those done, you can pry this, uh, you can pry this, uh, this plate off of the inner fender. But you can see the hoses running through there. That's why you need slack on the hoses. If you're going to withdraw this, you're going to want to pull the hoses through uh, that inner fender from the engine compartment. Now, these, only three screws holding this on. But what happens is, you know, you've got undercoating, years of muck, who knows. And this can be really tough to get out of here. You kind of have to gently pry it and eventually it will come. I find that tools kind of like this are really useful. These are the sort of tools that you use to uh, remove upholstery bits and stuff like that. And you can get them underneath here and get this pried up without damaging it. And eventually it will come out. And along the edge of it, there's a rubber seal here. You can see that. Um, that holds it against the uh, outside of the fender here. But it's just those three screws that hold it. And once you get them out, if you take your time and pry, you'll get it loose and then you can withdraw that and that will then reveal the mysteries of the charcoal canister. So what I'm doing now is I'm just pulling those vacuum lines right through so I can remove that and then get to the canister. Okay, so here is that then drawn down. It's now away from the car. You can see it here. That's the cover. Uh, that you sort of have to take out the three screws and pry it off. You can see the hoses running through it. Um, the hoses will have grommets on them. 
And, uh, and that's where they went through from the engine compartment. Um, you can see the one on here. You want to withdraw those, and we've got to then get these hoses to go through here in order to get access where they attach to the, uh, the charcoal canister. It just gives you an idea of what this all looks like then once you've drawn that down. Okay, so here's following the, the two hoses up, and you can see where they're attached. That metal thing is the charcoal canister. Normally those are okay. And, uh, and what you want to do is get those two hoses off the top of the canister and, and replace them with the new hoses. Uh, now in doing so though, remember you have to run the new hoses through that, uh, that sealer plate first before you put them in there. But that's how the access goes. That's where the hidden Alfa Romeo uh, spider charcoal canister is here uh, behind the wheel well. Okay, so now to get that canister out, there's one stud at the bottom that holds it, and then it basically slips over a clip at the top. So you have to get that stud out of there. It's a 13 millimeter, and obviously you're gonna want a kind of a long reach uh, socket on there and a deep socket because it's a stud. And, uh, and so you unscrew that, and then you can uh, push the canister up and withdraw it. So let's do it. Okay, so once, the, uh, once that nut is off the stud, it looks in very good shape here. Then you can just push the canister up and it comes off its little uh, bracket and out it comes of the car. And that allows you to inspect its condition. And more importantly for our task today, to get to uh, the connections uh, for these hoses, there's no way you'll get those hose clips off uh, when it's in place. You've got to go ahead and take it off, but it's not such a bad, uh, hard deal. And you just remove that stud. You can see there's a hole that holds the stud. Uh, there's uh, the, uh, the top hit that uh, basically fits over that clip at the top, and it just comes out uh, easy peasy. Here's the, uh, here's the back side of the, uh, of the canister, and you can see all the uh, information in terms of what you're looking at. In terms of the replacement, this is an 86. Um, this canister looks in good, good condition. I, I can see any reason uh, to, to replace this uh, at this point. Again, this is a California car very very good condition okay so we've got the canister all sorted we're ready to hook that up um, from the kit we're going to use a d hose which is going to be the smallest diameter one and we're going to use a b hose now you also need a short section of this a hose here uh, as a kind of a, um, a makeshift connector uh, for the b hose uh, onto the uh, onto that end and the original um, uh, piping had different size ends of it, uh, and this doesn't. And so the diameter is smaller at the, uh, at the canister than it is up here on the air intake. And so there's a kind of a workaround for that. What I found on the hose I took off is it had a bigger diameter and they basically just used, you know, a hose clamp to tighten it down as tight as they could get it uh, against the canister. So it wasn't obviously the original hosing that was on there and it was done as a kind of a makeshift thing. And we will, uh, we will do it a different way uh, and add a section of uh, the A-hosing to give us a bigger diameter to go on to the, uh, the air intake. So what I've done is I've put these things through. Uh, there you can see, I haven't put the grommets on yet. I've got myself plenty of slack here because I'm gonna wanna attach them to the canister and then get that canister back up inside. And I'll worry about cutting these to size and fitting them once I've got that sorted down below. Okay, so the new hoses are run through here, the, uh, the ceiling plate. Uh, they're firmly affixed to here, and, uh, and then they're running up uh, into the engine compartment. So I'm ready to go ahead and put this back in, attach that nut back to the stud, and, uh, and then uh, reaffix the, uh, the plate. And I'll show you something interesting once I get that in, uh, just for fun. Okay, so here it is back in. Uh, it's hung on that little uh, little hook in the inside and it's centered on this stud. So once we tighten up that stud, uh, that's gonna be it. It's gonna hold it in place and, uh, and we're ready to move on. Okay, so the ceiling plate is back in place and the lines are running through from the uh, charcoal canister 
uh, into the engine compartment. We'll put some grommets on there and then we can attach them uh, at the engine side of things.